Hi there. Let's solve single number. It reads, given a non-empty area of integers, nums, every element appears twice except for one. Find that single one. Follow-up question is, could you implement a solution with a linear one-time complexity and without using extra memory? Sure we can, and that's what we'll do. Now the following examples are pretty self-explanatory, so I don't need to go over them. Um, this question in terms of interview relevancy, and it is quite relevant as it, as it appears in companies like Facebook, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and Bloomberg. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so before I address the optimal approach, I'm going to be addressing the suboptimal approach, which I'll be solving um, using hash set. It can also be done using a hash map or even list operations. I've just decided to use hash set. So, the, par the question is such that first we're just asked to perform the task, which is to find the unique uh, element in the array. So we'll do the suboptimal, and then we do the optimization by um, not using uh, data structures and um, still getting that single element. So starting off, I have the single number, which is referencing my function to find the unique number in the integer array nums, which is the parameter of my function. And I'm going to be using a set data structure, which I've initialized here, which is referenced inside the variable that I called set for unique. I um, gave that specific name because, like I said, the set data structure, uh, its key feature is that it stores only unique values. So nowhere in the set will you find duplicacy. You don't find any uh, two same numbers in a set. So that's what the name is suggestive of. And using a for loop, I intend to traverse my nums array one digit at a time. So num basically means each of the whole. So that's sort of the syntax language there, num. So, so for each number uh, of this integer array, I'm going to ask if it's already in the array, which is set for unique dot has uh, num. That's what that means. So if it has that number already, for example, take my example area here, 2, 1, 2. So if 2 is already there in the first in instance, 2 will not be there. We have to insert it into the array. So the if condition here it doesn't apply yet. We come to the else condition. It's the first element. There's nothing in the uh, set. It's empty. So we add it to the set. So now just imagine a set with 2, the value 2. And then we iterate to the next element, which is 1. Now, again, we check, is there a 1 in the uh, set? There isn't. We haven't inserted the number 1 in the set. So we come to the else condition here, and we add it. Now the set has a number 2 and number 1. And we c go to the next element now, which is 2. Um, and that's the final element, as, can, as we can see here. So now uh, we ask in the if condition again, does the set have this value? Sure it does. We had inserted two um, starting out. So yeah, it has two. So what we do is we delete it. So what that means is we have came ac we came across the, the same value once before, and we, we just saw it again in the last element. So that's a duplicate. And then um, finally, we, we check the set. And set does have um, have the number one, so we re so we return it. So that's really the idea here, um, because we are traversing all the elements. The time complexity is O of n uh, linear time, so that means if I have ten elements, the time it will take is O of um, ten. Um, now the space complexity is O of n because we're using extra space, which is using the hash set to store those uh, digits. So that would be a, a linear time as well. And the next approach, which is optimal, it will not be using this space. So therefore that is optimized because um, the space would be O of 1 constant time in the next approach, which is using bit manipulation. So. Should you decide to run this code or debug it in a VS Code Editor, for example, then you can use this code and basically console it by calling this function single num and passing the num parameter. And I've, I've just declared an array to use it as my dummy array. It should output one. 
Okay, so now let's go to the um, bit manipulation. Okay, so to solve this problem optimally, we're going to be using this idea called bitwise XOR, or it's also called ZOR, or exclusive OR. So what it is is when a bitwise XOR is performed on a pair of bits, it returns one if, bit, if bits are different. So what are bits? Bits are basically zeros and one. Uh, the zeros and ones are used in a binary system. By means a system consisting of two. So in this case, two values. By, by using zeros and ones, numbers are represented in computers. So, so when I said that the when bitwise XOR is performed on a pair of bits, it returns one if bits are different. Basically, this is what the truth truth table is representing here. So we have one XOR zero or zero XOR one. So when the values the bits are different, then we get a one. So the comparison of the two bits, if if those two bits being compared they're different then we get a 1. So 0 XOR 1, 1 XOR 0 returns in, well, results in 1. But if the bits are same as seen uh, as can be seen here 1 XOR 1 or 0 XOR 0 it returns 0. So and the other idea is that if anything is XOR with 0 it returns itself. So so for that reason we start off with the result variable 0. And what we do is c compare the first element in our area, which is 2, with the 0. So 0 XOR 2 would res uh, result in itself. That means it would return 2. And basically the representation I have here is the binary uh, number, binary representation of the number 0 and 2. So this number here, 0, 0, 0, represents 0, and the one below represents 2. So 0 XOR 1 would give us 1, which is what the truth table tells us. 0 XOR 1 gives us a 1. And that 1 is a binary format. So that 1 equals to a 2 in our decimal uh, number system. OK, so we get the value 2, which would now be stored in our result variable. So now result equals to 2. Why? Because again, 0 XOR with anything, anything res results in itself, which is 2. So now result variables equals to 2. So we go to the next element, which is 1, and we compare that with our result. So 2 XOR 1. So now this is the binary representation for 2, and this is the representation for 1. So now what happens is the bits are, uh, each bit is compared vertically um, with the, um, its corresponding bit. So uh, on the rightmost side of the number here, so 0 and 1, they're being compared, it's going to return 1 as can be seen here 0 XOR 1 is 1 and 1 XOR 0 is also 1 so what does this mean this I just didn't write, write out the number so the two ones it would be the number 3 as can be seen here so it's a uh, 3 in decimal um, number so now the result will be 3 we go to our final element in our area which is 2 so 3 is the result now so we're going to compare 3 with 2 which is the final element right so 3 XOR 2 gives us a value of 1 how so because here the digits uh, 1 XOR 0 is 1 but 1 XOR 1 is 0 so what is this number representing this is the binary number 0 1 0 1 is the decimal number 1 as can be seen here so 1. So what now? Hey, we see, it seems like our XOR operation did find our single number in the area, which is 1. So to really like uh, briefly put this idea, it's basically um, this idea that A XOR A XOR B, really what happens is the A and A like terms which I said here, like like term 0, XOR 0, or 1, XOR 1, cancel out and they become 0. So then what you have is 0, XOR, um, another number. And I had said in the beginning, 0, XOR with any, anything returns itself. So 0, XOR, B would give B. So that's what happened in our uh, 
XOR operation. So that's really the concept. Now let's transcribe it into code. Okay, um, before I get to the code, I just wanted to show, um, I found this handy XOR calculator online and uh, basically just select the decimal um, for the type and then we can run the example here. So 0 XOR with 2 is 2 and then 2 XOR with 1 is 3 as we had seen, 3 XOR with 2 equals to 1, which we have seen. So that's a very neat tool to use. Now the code here is basically uh, very simple. Starting out we declare a result variable which equals to 0 and then we traverse our input array like so. Starting out with variable i equals to 0, i less than nums dot length, i plus plus, and then what we do is um, have the comparison in a single line of code which is result and I believe this is the caret key. So result the XOR symbol equals nums of i. So we do that from the first element till the last and then we simply re return the result. So let's run the code. And there you have it, let's submit it. And there it is. So basically the time complexity would be O of n because we have to traverse each element. So if I had 10 elements, we'd be doing 10 traversal. So that's what O of n means. And the space complexity is O of one constant time, and that's the reason why this solution is optimized as opposed to the prior suboptimal solutions that I'd mentioned were possible. Um, because we're not using any data structure or a spare array to manipulate the elements to achieve our uh, resulting single number, there, therefore it gives a nice uh, O of one space time, uh, space for this. So I hope this makes sense. Should you have further questions or clarifications, please leave them down below. And um, if you have any further optimization ideas or any content ideas that you have for me, please leave them down below and like and subscribe, please. I work really hard to make this content available. Thank you and Happy New Year to those celebrating.